Good day, ladies and gents. My name is Johan Berger, and it's indeed my privilege to introduce to you the concept of systems thinking. Now, the question that I normally get is, what is systems thinking? And it's quite simple. In its bare essence, systems thinking is about big picture thinking. Understanding the big picture, understanding how the parts relate to the big picture, and how the parts relate to one another. Now, the problem that we find is that we try to get an understanding by taking something apart. And whilst it is necessary to do that, it is, tends to be insufficient. Why the need for systems thinking? Except with the name of Adam Cahane made the point that the world has become so complex that we do need to think systemically. We do need to exercise big picture thinking. And he spoke about three kinds of complexities. First of all, he referred to the concept of dynamic complexity. And basically what dynamic complexity tells us is that cause and effect is far removed in terms of time and space. That means that something will happen today and then a whole number of years, for example, could go by before we start feeling the effect. If we think about global warming today and understand that the seeds for that probably lies in the Industrial Revolution two, three hundred years ago. I think that demonstrates the point quite well. The second kind of complexity that Adam Cahane refers to is the concept of generative complexity. And basically what generative complexity tells us is that yesterday is no predictor of what we can expect tomorrow. So that even when we do plan, there are so many factors that could impact upon that planning and that we need to be aware of. For example, if you've developed a strategy and you stick to that strategy come what may, you will probably end up implementing a strategy that's totally irrelevant given the changes that have taken place. And seeing that we live in an emerging world, we need to take into consideration that the world is volatile and there will be a whole range of emerging factors impacting upon our strategy. The third kind of complexity Adam refers to is the concept of social complexity. And we don't need to be a brain surgeon to understand that. Um, we just need to look at South Africa, where we have a whole host of different ethnic groups, different cultures, different languages, different re religions, political affinities, you name it. So when we put these three together, namely dynamic complexity, generative complexity, and social complexity, we need to understand the big picture. We need to think in systemic terms, we need to think strategically. System thinking is absolutely essential for thinking strategically. In the world of strategic management, we differentiate between strategic thinking and strategic planning. Whereas strategic planning is about analytical, taking apart the environment. It's about being convergent, focusing, and being conventional, applying what we know. Strategic thinking is the very opposite thereof. It requires us, instead of analytical thinking, looking at synthesis thinking, where it is about understanding what the big picture is about. Instead of thinking convergently, we need to go divergently. And that means we need to move into new areas, being willing and prepared to investigate the unknown. And then, together with that, the third point, instead of thinking conventionally, we need to think creatively, innovatively. And that only comes about when we understand the world in systemic terms. And we understand our world in systemic terms. Having spoken about that, I think what is also important to remember is that we, when we look at the concept of systems thinking, it is not so much about understanding the theory, which obviously is important. It is also about developing a world view. That is what system thinking is in essence. It's not a body of knowledge. It's not just a body of knowledge. It is a world view. It's how we see the world. It's how we make sense of the world. And that will drive our values, which in turn will drive our attitudes, which in turn will drive our behavior. So if we want to change behavior, it doesn't make a lot of sense only working at the behavioral level. We need to go down 
eventually even to the concept of a person's worldview and mental models. That in essence, however, is something very difficult to do. So organizations tend today not to go down as deep as the worldview and the mental models of the individuals, but rather work at the level of values. Values transformation has become quite important in the world of today. We either need to change the people or we need to change them as people. What we need to understand is that we work with a hierarchy of systems. Your school basically has different hierarchical levels. The principal, his deputies, the teachers, the scholars. Outside of the school, you have the school, you have the parents, the parents have jobs, the society at large, and your neighborhood society fits into the suburb of the town, which fits into the town, which fits into the province, which fits into South Africa. The hierarchical levels in the world of systems is something quite natural. And one needs to understand what the different hierarchical levels look like, given the different contexts which we look at. The teachers, on the one sense, they are teachers within the school environment. In another sense, they are parents themselves. In another sense, they are participants in a sport club, a political party, um, a church. The point being is that when we look at the role players, the stakeholders, we need to understand they represent different systems and we need to understand that in that specific context there are different hierarchical levels at play. So we need to understand that. What we also need to understand is that the processes, the activities that take part or do happen rather, that are implemented within a system continues irrespective of the level of the hierarchy at which we are working. I should actually say they should continue because frequently they don't. And then you get silos between functions and also silos between levels. So the executive might have different views and then their views stop at that level. And then at the teacher's level, there's another set of views that are not connected and linked or aligned with that of the executive. And then you have the processes at the scholar's level, which then are also a different um, level. And if the processes there are not aligned with those of the teachers, which could not be aligned with the executive, then you have a problem. Then you have a horizontal silo. Functional silos typically happen when Marketing doesn't talk to production, doesn't talk to sales, doesn't talk to whatever. The point that I would like to make is that between the different hierarchical levels, the processes should continue. I would also like to make the point, ladies and gentlemen, that when you work with systems, systems co-create one another. And that, in a certain sense, impacts upon the continuity of the activities along the different hierarchical levels. If you look at the world of education today, what we do or do not do within the education system has an impact on the economic system, it has an impact on the social system, it has an impact on the crime system, if you want to call that a system in, um, itself. And basically what it means is that no system is an island. We impact upon one another, we co-create one another. If the value system in society at large is one that is full of corruption, low moral values, we cannot expect a vibrant and alive and dynamic education system. And if both of those are sick, we cannot expect an economy at large that is alive and vibrant. They impact upon one another, they affect one another, they grow one another. The bad news of that, obviously, is, is that whatever we do wrong in one part of the um, total South African society system will impact negatively upon the rest. The good point there on is that what happens well in the rest, what's good in the rest, will then have an impact on the others as well. 
So by taking something in the education environment, developing school children that think, that think dynamically, that think strategically agile, we can make a big contribution towards the health of the system at large.